I apologize for being late. Om Gyan Timidam Dasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Navitam Yenatas My Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Vakti Vedanta Swami Tinamune Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pachari Nenir Vsesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Pavacha Tita Nam Pavane Gyo Vaishnavi Gyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. One of the essential uh, activities that are given by Srila Prabhupada for our spiritual development is the worship of Tulsi Devi. Tulsi Devi, she is a resident of Sri Brindavan Dam. And uh, her worship has been established by Srila Prabhupada as part of the morning program that we do in every one of our temples. It follows right after the Nishringa prayers which are right at the end of the Mangalarti. Tosi Devi is a gopi, and she is one of the principal gopis of Vrindavan. She works under the direction of Purnamasi, who is the, she is known as Yoga Maya, who her service is to arrange various types of uh, meetings for Radha and Krishna. And she employs, or you might say, she is assisted by Vrinda Devi, who um, assists her in bringing about there's a place in Vrindavan called Vrindakund. You can also go there. And there's a beautiful deity of Vrinda Devi there. It's a compound. There's also a temple that was been recently built there. And um, there are two kunds. One is Vrindakund and one is Guptakund. Guptakund is just towards the other side of Vrindakund. And it's a place where Vrinda Devi would meet with all the principal gopis and discuss where Radha and Krishna's pastimes should take place and then make all of the arrangements. Vrinda Devi has two parrots, one yellow, and one blue. And they assist her in gathering information about Radha and Krishna. They, uh, they comb around the area of Vrindavan and see what Radha and Krishna is doing, report back to Vrinda Devi. Um, I used to know the names of both parents, but somehow right now I'm unable to remember. But if somebody remembers their names, you can tell me right away. <laughs> Anyone remember her parents' names? One is... Um, 
can't remember. It's like right there at my memory, but I can't Vichakshana, I think it is. Vichakshana is one of the parrots. And I don't remember the other one. But both of them are uh, dutiful and very qualified assistants of Vrindan Devi who gather information for Radha and Krishna perform pastimes. And so this goes on every day to set the stage because the whole principle of Vrindavan Dham is to bring Radha and Krishna together in different ways so they can enjoy personal pastimes with each other. <laughs> So Brenda Devi has manifested herself in the material world as a sacred plant. She is known as Tulsi. And uh, she is worshipped every day in our temples, sometimes in the evening also. In fact, most temples do morning and evening worship. And it says that we chant a beautiful praise prayer. Namo Namo Tulsi Krishna Prahyasi Namo Namo Radha Krishna Seva Pavo Eha Vilasi Ye to Mara Saranaloi Tara Vancha Purna Hoi Kripa Kori Koratari Rindavana Vasihi Naham Hornamur Murahe. Vilas Vilas Kunjadio Vahas Nayane Vrivo Sada Yugala Rupasi E Navy Ne Dana Dado Saki Agunata Koro E Sevahari Karo Dihe Koro Nijagasi Dina Krishna Dasi Kohoi Ihe Namura Hohoi Sri Radha Govinda Preme Sadayena Bahasi Namona to see Krishna Prahyasi Namona. Brunda Devi, could you bring up that prayer with translation? Thank you, Susanna. Daksha is the skillful parrot, Vichakshana is the wise parrot. Thank you. That's very helpful. Runda Devi, uh, translation to the song we just sing, which is the uh, Tulsi Arti. Okay. Uh, go down to the translation. O Tosi, beloved of Krishna, I bow before you again and again. My only desire is to tame the service of Radha and Krishna. O Goddess, uh, whoever takes shelter of you has his wishes fulfilled. Bestowing your mercy on him, you make him a resident of Vrindavan. My desire is that you will also grant me a residence in the pleasure goes of Sri Vrindavan and thus within my vision I will always behold the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. I beg you to make me a follower of the cowherd damsels of Raj. Please give me the privilege of devotional service and make me your own maid servant. 
this lowly and fallen servant of Krishna Das prays, may I always swim in the love of Shishi Radha Govinda. Here it adds that by the circulation of Srimati Tulsi Devi, all the sins that one may have committed are destroyed at every step, even the sin of killing a Brahmin. Yani kani chapapani, Brahmahat vidikani cha, tani tani padasyanti paksana pade pade. So you see Brahmahatya in the first line. Hatya means killer. And Brahma means Brahma. So even the killer of a Brahmana is relieved of the reactions of that sin by the mercy of Tulsi, maybe one who circulates, ambulates Tulsi every day. Okay, go down the page. Okay, go ahead, go down the page farther. But go slowly so you don't jump the letters too fast. Go small, go slow. Go down the page so we can see the words, yes. Um, Maharaj, you uh, down it. the page, down the page. That's it? Yes, Maharaj. That's it. That's why. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and sometimes the devotees um, bring Tulsi Devi into their home for worship. Now, this is something that is very, very serious and should be done with great care and attention. Um, many times temples have many, many Tulsi plants and uh, they offer uh, devotees who are initiated, of course, to take Tulsi Devi and bring them into their homes and worship them. But, in any Western country, we find that Tulsi Devi has a very difficult time maintaining her natural health. And therefore, it requires a great amount of arrangements to make sure she can stay healthy, which means regular morning sunlight and a portion of water given regularly in accordance with the amount of sunlight that she receives. There are books all about worshiping and caring for Tulsi. One should get these books and follow them. It's not that one can take a Tulsi and bring it to her home and then she gets sick. If that happens, uh, you will get a reaction for that. <laughs> you will get a reaction of committing an offense to a pure devotee. So, um, in the fence, I'm not saying how serious it is, but it's something that you should consider. So no one should take care of Tulsi unless they can actually take care of Tulsi. Um, it's, um, we've seen many times devotees take Tulsi and then Tulsi dies or she gets very sick for whatever reason. Better to avoid that by not taking Tulsi. But if you do, and you decide to do it, make sure you get all of the, the care and arrangements that are needed, plus the advice in order to do it nicely. She is very kind and merciful. She provides herself for anyone and everyone, but still, she is a pure devotee. So uh, we should be very conscious that if we're going to accept this worship into our homes, it must be done with great care, attention, and regularity. Mm -hmm. and that's important. And advice in every each and every case is required in order to ensure that she gets the proper care. Okay, and uh, we... Uh, we pray to Tulsi Devi. Of course, it says in the uh, 
nectar of devotion simply by seeing Tulsi, simply by touching Tulsi, simply by worshiping Tulsi, simply by circumambulating Tulsi, all of one's sinful act reactions are destroyed. So uh, she's very dear. The pastime of her coming to the material world is an interesting story. It's a very detailed pastime. Um, I don't have all of the uh, information in front of it, but apparently, apparently it was arranged that she did something wrong in the spiritual world. No one can do anything wrong in the spiritual world, but somehow or other this Leela was played out in order for her to come to the material world in order for uh, her to be worshipped by the devotees in the material world. So there was some Leela attached to her apparent falling out of, the, out of grace into the spirit in the material world. But as Prabhupada said, no one can fall from the spiritual world. No, no eternal associate can fall from this. And she's an eternal associate of the Lord. She is uh, a very elevated gopi who doesn't fall down <laughs> in any case. There's a beautiful story. Of course, it says that Tulsi leaves and Shalagram Sheila are worshipped together when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before he made his advent in the material world, Sri Advaita Charya used to regularly go down to the banks of the Ganga and with Tulsi leaves, Sandalwood Pope, and worshiping his Shalagram Sheila, he would call very loudly, praying for the mercy of the Lord to descend in the material world and uh, purify the material world by giving us his mercy in the form of the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There's also a beautiful story where that Tulsi, when she was in the material world, um, she got connected with one particular demon who disguised himself and then married her. And then she was married to this demon. Because Tulsi was very, very chaste, her husband, who was a very powerful demon, was invincible. Only by the chastity of Tulsi was he invincible. And the demigods were concerned that he was causing so much havoc in the universe. So there was some plan to destroy the chastity of Tulsi Devi in order for him, this demon, to lose his power. He was so powerful, he was fighting with Durga Devi herself, and she could not defeat him. He was such a powerful demon because of the chastity of Tulsi Devi. So Lord Vishnu took the, the, took the form of her husband and had uh, relationships with her. When this was understood that she had become of course, how could Vishnu be, you know, how could Vishnu break her chastity? But actually, that Leela played itself out that actually she did. Her chastity was broken. And she was tricked. And because of that, the demon became weak. And he, then he was easily defeated. And the demigods were again able to maintain the universal affairs. When Tulsi Devi heard that, That, she, that the Lord had tricked her, she cursed him that you will become a rock. And he counter cursed her and said that you will become a plant. <laughs> so it's interesting that the counter curse worked in the such that we take Tulsi leaves from Tulsi plant and place it on the head of Shalagran Sheila and that is how we worship. Shalagram Sheila must be worshipped with Tulsi leaves. Otherwise, that worship is not worship. Okay, there's a little bit about Tulsi Devi. 
great to Tosi Devi. Um, she is very merciful. And those who, who have Tosis in their homes uh, be very careful and very conscious and very expert in making sure she gets the care that's required. In India, there's no problem. Tulsi flourishes easily, naturally, even without much care. But in Western countries, because she is not native to these countries, she doesn't, as a plant, she does, she has a lot of trouble in the winter time. Usually in the summertime, she does fine, but in the winter times, it requires constant uh, care with temperature regulations, um, artificial lighting, which will provide sunlight when there is no sun in the winter, and day-to-day um, -day worship and care like that. And Tulsi Devi is very merciful. Okay, so these are some things we can think about in our worship of the Supreme Lord. Tulsi is uh, a very intricate part of our day-to-day -day life, and she is very kind. So any questions? Thank you, Maharaj, for explaining the glories of Tulsi uh, Maharani. Thank you. I, I request devotees, if there are any questions, comments, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. <clears throat> All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, thank you for this uh, wonderful narration of the pastimes of the personality of Tulsi Devi. Um, I have a very specific question which I have doubts over. And the question is that when you have Tulsi uh, in your house, and when you, when you have a few of them, because for example, last year I, or two years ago, during the lockdown, I made an attempt to grow Tulsi Devi from seeds at my house. And I had a few of them. And uh, I was then requesting the devotees who would like to take care of her to come and take it. And my question is that, can, uh, can you give, so if somebody else asks, apart from devotee, a non-devotee, where you're not sure that they would take care of her in the sense that they would take care of her, but you know, they're meat eaters and they are just having Tulsi Devi because it's a cultural thing for Indians to have Tulsi in the house. I wouldn't give it at all. Yeah. Okay, Maharaj. So I have the same opinion and I was really being strong in my view to not give Tulsi Devi for people who would not be, you know, a, take care, but also, you know, not really understand the significance and their meat eaters as well. No, they shouldn't, Tulsi shouldn't go there. She's a, she's sacred. She's a pure devotee. Yeah. Some people say, well, if people get it, then they'll, that'll help them transform into more of a devotee. But I don't think we should subject Tulsi to that environment. It's not proper. Although she's very merciful. Oh, thank you, Maharaj, because I was also of the same opinion and I was thinking, am I being too radical in my views on that one? Because I would always ask to somebody, you know, are you taking it for yourself to take care or are you thinking of passing it over to someone else and things like that? And Prabhupada gave a list of 15 items on how we should take care of Tulsi. And sometimes, you know, what people do is that they take the leaves and they make tea out of it. And this is a this Prabhupada strictly warned against this. He said this is a fence. We don't even if she is, you know, even if she is no longer living, you still can't do that. Make tea out of Tosi. You find people that one of the reasons why they get Tosi is to get Tosi tea. <clears throat> really. Yeah, I've heard people just saying that we just eat and pluck leaves and just eat it because it's good. And I said, no, you should not do that. Uh, not devotees, obviously, but, you know, Indian background. You family. Should, should, no, the, the Tulsi leaves are meant for Krishna. 
And if she, they take the leave after it's been offered to Krishna, then that's prashad. But they cannot take directly. Yes. Yeah. The, there's a letter Srila Prabhupada wrote in response to a letter by this girl named um, Vidya. If you can look up Prabhupada's letters to Vidya, I believe the letter was in around 1973, I'm not sure, around that time. But do a little research. One that let what that letter to Vidya is a very detailed explanation of how to, to take care of toast by Srila Prabhupada directly. Her name is Vidya. Yes, Maharaj, uh, I've located okay. the letter, so I will read it. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, you located it. Good. Thank you. I responded to your letter today, so um, you check your email, you'll see it's my response. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Shri Shri Prabhu. Hare Guru Mother Sukava. How are you, Guru Maharaj? Good to see you after a long time. I know. <laughs> I was hiding. <laughs> uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, my question is in connection with Diptesh Prabhu's question that um, if we give our Tulsi Maharani to devotees because they, we know that they take care of it, take care of Tulsi Maharani and then something happens and the Tulsi Maharani leaves them, like, you know, she dies. So is it, is it not good as well? Or should, should we, we do to, it? You have, to, you have to kind of instruct people that they, you have to kind of evaluate where that Tulsi is going and see. But uh, foresight, if, if you feel that they, they can take care. But if you feel there's the slightest you know, discrepancy in their ability to take care, then I wouldn't give. Mm -hmm. Because it also hurts them if they, uh, they don't take care, right? And then she dies. Yeah, it hurts them a lot. They say that we tried our level best, but it just, I don't know, something is happening. So, I don't know. Can't be, it's not an, she's not an experiment. Exactly, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, is there anyone else who would like to share or ask any question? There's another beautiful song. It goes, Namo Namo Tulsi Krishna. What, now, let me see how that song goes. Maharani Vrindehi Maharani Namo Namo yeah. I can't remember how it goes. It's so beautiful. It's by Chandra Shekhar. Maybe you could look it up. The Tulsi prayer by Chandra Shekhar. You can look it up under the author's name. Runda? Yes, Maharaj, I'm looking for it. Yeah, no. His name is Chandra Shekhar, and he's the one that wrote that song. Mm -hmm. 
Look it up in the same area you were looking before. Narayani Vindehi Mahadhi Namo. 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 I posted the link on the chat. Uh, can you open that one? Mataji? Yes, Mataji. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay, Namo. Yeah, Namo. Namo. To see. Maharani Vrindev, Mahani Namo Namo, Namo Re Namo Re Malyam, Namo Naharani, Namo Re Namo Re Malyam. Namo Narahani Vrindehi Mahani Namo Namo Yanko Dasare Parase Agana Sahoyaham Mahima Veda Purane Vakyani Yanko Patra Manjari Komola Sri Pati Charana Kamale Lapatini. I don't have the melody down, but it's a beautiful song. Old Tosi Maharani, old Rindade, I offer my obeisance unto you again and again. O Naharani, I offer my obeisance unto you again. And again, by seeing or touching you, all sins will destroy. Your glories are sung in the Vedas and Puranas. Your leaves and soft manjaris are twined around the lotus feet of Lakshmi's Lord. O fortunate Tulasi, by your performance of austerity, you have become Sri Shalagram's worshipful concert. You shower mercy upon one who offers incense, lamps, foods, worship, and flowers. The Lord does not accept even one of the 56 grain offerings or 36 vegetable offerings without Tulsi leaves. Shiva, Sukha, Narada, Brahma, and the other demigods and the great learned sages all circumambulate you. Chandrasekhar, O Tulsi Man, Chandra sings your glories. Give him the gift of devotion. Shiva Sukhanaharara Ayur Brahma Laidikahu Duratta Piratta Mahamuni Jani. I can't get the, the, uh, <laughs> I can't get the melody right. But anyway, it's something like that. That's close. Chandra Shekharam Maya. Tera yasha go yehi, Bakati dana diehi, Mahani Vrindehi, Mahani Namo Namo. We used to sing this song in our morning prayers to Tulsi at the very end every day. And somehow it was taken out of the daily, daily worship, but it's so sweet. <laughs> so devotional. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, I did not know about this. Thank you for letting us know. So beautiful. Okay, any um, more questions? I found the letter uh, by Prabhupada here, Maharaj. Uh, say again? I found out the letter by Prabhupada to 
Vidya. Yeah. Okay, why don't you read it? <laughs> nice and loud. Okay. My dear Vidya Dasi. Nice and loud. Okay. <laughs> my dear Vidya Dasi, please accept my blessings. I am in due receipt of, of your letter dated September 27, 1976. If it is not possible for Tulsi to survive the winters when planted in the ground, then a suitable house should be provided for her. Even in the Canadian temples, where are, which are in a much colder climate, are keeping Tulsi nicely. Why should there be so much difficulty in Los Angeles, which has such a nice climate? Just do everything very carefully. Tulsi flourishes where there is love and devotion. In answer to your questions, one, Tulsi is one devotee who appears wherever there is devotion to Krishna. Two, Tulsi's body is spiritual. Three, yes, jewelry is all right. Four, if possible. Okay. Five, Tulsi leaves should be offered to the deity. Six, if, if possible. Seven, yes. Eight, yes. Nine, you may cut the dead branches, but what is, uh, what is the necessity? 10, I never said that. 11, no. 12, yes. 13, use the wood for beads as far as possible. The balance may be placed within the earth. 14, I said no chemical sprays. 15, undisturbed means what? 16, use common sense and if you have none, then consult with others. <laughs> <laughs> 17, no. 18. Don't try to introduce something new. The most important thing is the love and devotion. Hoping this meets you in good health. You try know. to get the letter that she wrote to Prabhupada. Uh, okay, Prabhupada Maharaj. I will then try you to... can understand the yes and no responses. Yes, I will try to find it, Maharaj. Just give me. Her letter is dated almost the same time. September 27, 1976. <laughs> Is it available? Oh, I'm trying to find it, Maharaj. I could find only the uh, letter from Prabhupada. Yeah, one, some, one of those answers is that said no. Is so, she's asking, can you make tea from Tulsi? Prabhupada well, says no. Okay, thank you. I can't find it, Maharaj. Maybe if I find later. Okay, we'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is tomorrow is Thursday. Yes, Maharaj. The, yes, the good class, tomorrow's <laughs> class is a little earlier. Yes, good Maharaj, it's with the Iskon Harrisburg devotees and uh, it will be 8 a.m. Eastern Time, um, 7 a.m. CST. And okay. it will be one time. Okay. Thank you. After 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Yes, good Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, my obeisances to everyone and Read more and worship more Tulsi Devi. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Ah, the Lord is Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.